Hey everybody, it's your boy the Green Tyrant coming at you with a game that I don't know what to say. I mean, um, mostly backup players. That basically what started the whole game off. We did pretty well offensively, defensively, but most of the second team, most of the second and third, most of the third, most of the second stringers and third stringers and practice squad players played most of the entire game. So it is what it is, but. Hold on, just a minute and listen. Attack. Look, I know the final score was not great, but the fact that the Eagles went out and went toe to toe with a team that won the division and is feeling pretty good about themselves on the flight home, uh, we'll see how long that feeling lasts with Dallas in this one. But I think the big thing is that the Eagles went out, they competed, they saw some, they got some good tape from a lot of their young, inexperienced players, guys that have not played much at all this season. And this goes on both sides of the football, guys. Uh, I was just trying to try to do the math. As we're leading up to the show, my guess is if you look at the back seven, the starters that played the majority of the snaps here for this game, if you add up all of their snaps this season before this game, that they would have had less snaps than Ezekiel Elliott had carries this season. Like just it's a completely inexperienced group on defense. Yeah, they they gave up some yards, they gave up some points, but I like the way the group competed. They went toe to toe with the team that won the division here this year. Yeah, no doubt about it, Fran. Stay on that offensive side of the ball. One of the guys you heard him. I was looking forward to seeing tonight because I thought he would get extensive action is rookie running back Kenny G. Kenny Gaines. Like I said, we don't play most of our backups. First, second, uh, second and third stringers and, and practice squad players. Man shoot through for 186 yards on, off 19 of 36 um, attempts. Game well, I mean, then, then, then two touchdown passes, one pick. Um, and we all know that um, uh, 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 um, Devonta Smith got the all-time rookie record with, with 916. He, um, off, off the second play, he had 912. But he broke, he, but, he, but he got four more extra yards, and now he off the all-time Rookie record once owned by Deshaun Jackson. He beat Deshaun Jackson record by four yards. We're still playing, playing Leighton Vander Esch and Neville, Neville Gallimore and Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory, all of their starters for the first three quarters. Really, really impressive outing from that Eagles offensive front. Yeah, Kenny Gainwell averaging six and a half yards per carry. Still pretty impressive when he uh, stuck his foot in the ground and he ran yep. downhill. But we also have to talk about Tyree Jackson and I spoke a lot about uh, during the kickoff show. Catching his first NFL uh, pass in the game, and uh, that catch also being a touchdown. Three Eagles now this year, Ella, that have their first catch, and it went for a touchdown. Their first career catch going for a touchdown, Devontae Smith and Lane Johnson being the other two. Uh, and I love that on that drive, which I'm going to break down a little bit later in the show, that touchdown. Tyree Jackson, three, three catches for 22 yards, one score. Shovel to Richard Rodgers early. It was on the play before that, and then they come right back to it, run a different version of the play, and it goes for six points. So uh, you like Ty Tyree Jackson getting on the board there. He had a couple nice catches in the game. Unfortunately, did go down with an injury, and I guess we'll wait uh, for the update on that this week. Yeah, he did get injured, Tyree Jackson. So I hope the injury wasn't serious. I hope it's just minor. You know what I'm saying? But we locked in football game 51 26. Dad Perkar had an impressive game. With, with, I think, 295 yards, five touchdown scores, I believe. He never had a he never had a five touchdown game up until against us. That's bad. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that don't sit well with me. And probably won't sit well with, with the rest of the Eagles fan base, but, you know, 186 yards, two touchdown scores. Game with three carry, 13, 12 carry, 78 yards, one touchdown. Then um, Tyree, like I said, Tyree just threw his two yards, one touchdown. And Smith had three receptions, 41 yards, with 13.7 yard average. And Watkins had five catches, 84 yards, one touchdown. He scored, he scored the last touchdown in the game. And Scott had five, five tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss, and a quarterback hit. And William, Monty Williams had three total tackles, one pass depression, two tackles, four loss, one quarterback hit. Devonta Smith set the franchise, new franchise record for for receiving yards in a single season. Like I said, like I mentioned earlier in the game, 
he has nine hundred and he had, he had, he had, he had, he had actually he actually has eight hundred and seventy five yards coming into this game. But he but the forty one yards that he caught today put him over nine hundred and sixteen yards. So what more can you say about that? playing a lot of defense defensive end tonight and that was one of the things i was most interested to see a how much was he going to play and then b where was he going to line up because we know the eagles they're they don't have, they don't have incredible depth at defensive end right now but at defensive tackle they've got a lot of bodies so we saw a lot of marlon tui Pelotu inside we saw a lot of marvin wilson uh, the undrafted free agent defensive tackle he played a lot in this game and we saw a lot of hassan ridgeway but we saw milton williams line up at both spots on the defensive front create pressure Get, get into the backfield. They had a couple nice tackles of Ezekiel Elliott behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage in this game. He continues to just play with so much energy. He had another uh, knockdown pass in this game. That's been a theme over the last month. Milt Williams, number 93, has really come on here, especially these last few weeks. I hate to bring up anything negative on tonight besides beating down the Cowboys for putting 50 points on us. But the one thing one thing stood out to me, Fran, tonight uh, was a little odd. Aaron Sipas, his punt. Oh yeah. Um, the kicker, supposedly whatever his name is, the man had a kick off off the side of his leg, and that side and that side of and that side kick that he that he kicked in the air, it landed landed the Cowboys beyond the 50 yard line at the 40 yard line. That was one of the negative plays that the Cowboys were able to score a touchdown on when they kicked him when the kicker actually kicked the ball. Beyond the 40 yard line, he didn't kick the ball past the 50. He kicked it. He kicked it over to our 50, outside the outside of the field at the 40 yard line. So he was 10 yards short of of, 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 of the native field goal, and that and that right there was a mess in his own right. A very mess in his own right. Home just a minute. Can push a little something. Can I put this something right quick? Hold on just a minute. So I can find it. It should be here. It should be here. It should be here. I'm hoping I can find it. Hope I can find it. If not, I'm going to go back to where I was. seem to see it here but like i might have to go back to where i was earlier and uh i'm trying to find my, my favorite sports show but i don't seem to I don't, I don't see it right now so i really don't know what's going on at this point um this is just some crazy situations that i'm trying to find but i can't seem to find it right now um I might have found it. We are Cruz Fighters! Biggest comeback in history. I think this, I don't think, I think this is the one that I really wasn't, okay. This ain't the one I really want to see. This this the actually the end game, the end game live with with the halftime report. Hello, welcome to in game live, brought to you by Nissan. I'm Amy Kudo alongside Ray Dittinger. We're gonna break down the first half of this reg. Oh, that's Pete Cotton. No, I ain't what I want to see. Oh boy. Eagles I I mean I cannot seem to find that that repertoire because the simple fact is I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. And that's what's bothering me at this moment. I don't really see that situation right now. Well give me a few minutes. But overall I could just say that the this game, like I said, it had mostly all our backup players um in this game and um I think we could have done better than this, but the Cowboys did 
a, a, a very they, 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 they beat us. It's just that simple. And no, 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 no other way, no, no, no other way that we can look at it. The Cowboys played most of their stars up, up to the third quarter, second, the, the the fourth quarter of the game. They had all their backups, and their, and their backups did better than our backups. So that kind of makes you wonder how we're gonna do well in this playoff game coming. And Kobe, because the way they're saying we are more likely to play the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is gonna be a road game at Tampa Bay. So um, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work, but. Something, but we need to play better because we lost a whole lot, a whole lot of momentum in this game, and 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 and, it, and it's been lost completely. I mean, if you just look at the entire game as a whole, um, the Eagles started off pretty well. Well, actually, the Eagles did real well in in the first half, cause cause cause, cause it went it went I think I think it went into halftime 17-17 tie I believe, and then the Cowboys and the Cowboys came back out. The Eagles got them off the field off the first. Off their first try, and then the then, then, then Eagles got out there, and Eagles couldn't do nothing. So the Cowboys got back out there on the on, on the second try after coming back from the uh, from the halftime break, and they scored. And so that's so many ways, so many things that, that you really actually can look at. Because see, thing about it, like I said, it's all about making halftime adjustments. And I'm quite sure the Eagles did do some halftime adjustments in this game. But the question is, though. How well what the backups are going to play, and I can give them. I can give these entire backup squad. I will say I'm gonna give them a B. No, nah, B. Change that. And give them. I'm gonna give them the entire backup squad a C minus, not a plus. Because if it was a plus, then they would have done better in the second half of this game. And the worst thing I really hate the most embarrassing thing in this game though, at former Eagles running back Lamont me on, on on what's the name. Um, Clint Clement, the running back Corey Clement, they allowed Corey Clement to run 35 or 40 yards on them for a touchdown. That was the most embarrassing play that I ever seen the Eagles actually allow. And to allow a former Eagles player to get a touchdown on your defense, that doesn't sit well with me. That's the thing that I really hate about it, that they allowed Corey Clement former Eagles running back and former Eagles player who helped us win a Super Bowl beat us 35, 40 yards up the field for a touchdown score. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get over that. I mean, the entire game, I, I understand because they had most of their backup players. They didn't want to get any, any starters hurt. That part I understand. But when you let a backup beat the backup defense for a score, that's not that, that that don't sit well with me. I'm sorry. And so if anyone feel any different, you, you are free to come in on my channel. You know what I'm saying? You can come in, share, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and notification bell on top. So when the, so when I make a video come directly from me to you, you know it is my video, my face is a whole, you know that it's me making a video for you guys out there. And um But like I said, this, this game really this game wasn't really um well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it, it was a strange game. The game really was strange because I expect the backups to play a whole lot better than than I actually wanted to. And I'm not gonna say that, and, and uh, I'm not gonna say to do some embarrassing loss, but I will say it's a a strange loss. And it, and it really, really, and it really, really strange to me. It really is. So, um, I'm trying to find this this thing, but um, I can't find that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my talk and then get, and then get off this um this this, this video. Um, not the more we can say. I mean, when you play all backups, your second, third, the second, third, and backup and backup players off the practice squad, this is what you get. And this is the production that you get because, see, one of the reasons why you play your backups because you want to see how well your backups are going to back you up going to the playoffs in case they are needed or on call or if their number is called. That's, that's the reason why you play your backups. The only the only playoffs that did real well in this game was actually um, it's Watkins, Gamewell, um, let me see who else. Um, the running back did extraordinarily well. I mean, game, game well. The game well was, was pretty much the starter 
the month of um, the month of this game. He had he had 78, 78 yards rushing on twelve carries. So he started most of the game. And he caught the ball, threw their way out of the backfield, you know what I'm saying? And so he he was the basic starting running back this entire game going forward because Boston Scott got rested and so did uh 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 um Sanders and Howard. Don't 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 three guys didn't play tonight. Um, Hurst didn't play tonight. The entire the entire offensive line didn't play tonight. Only only guy that played tonight was 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 on Jason Kelsey, but Kelsey only played one snap and he got off the field. We had a few players that got hurt. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I like I mentioned earlier in the video, Tyree Jackson got hurt, um, uh, an injured leg or something like that. I, like I said, I hope the injury wasn't serious because we we will need him in this playoff game coming. Richard Rogers did pretty well. I think, I think he caught a couple of pack, a couple of passes. You know what I'm saying? So defense did what they could, but like I said, they were mostly second, third, and and, and practice squad defensive players, offensive players as well. Like I said, um, De Devonta Smith got his four catches for um fifty, I think forty four yards. I think what it was. He forty four forty. He had five catches for forty one yards. He didn't get he, he didn't get he didn't get no touchdown. But he was able to get the the all time rookie record that was once held by Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson had held the record with nine hundred twelve yards. And every record stood for, every, every record stood for at least twelve years. I mean, at least twelve years. As far as, as I can remember, I mean, since two thousand eight, two thousand eighteen. I think comes from one, one, two. No, yeah, 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 yeah. It it is it twelve or thirteen years that record stood for a while. And now Devonta Smith owns the record, and it's a good chance they're ever going to stand him for another ten or fifteen years. For them, because Devonta Smith, by the next time Devonta Smith play, if he keep playing on in, into his career, it's a possibility that he could he could, he could probably wind up being um, the all time receiving record, which, which is which, which is also earned also owned by the Sean Jackson. Jackson also on the Eagles all time receiving record as an Eagle. He had like I think he had like five thousand yards I believe before he was before he was released because he had three three or four three of five one thousand yard seasons. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, because remember in the first year he had nine hundred yards nine hundred yards receiving. He had thousand yards to three seasons back after that, and then the fifth year he had left the net. And I think like seven hundred yards, somewhere seven eight hundred yards, somewhere long up in there was a career low from his from, from, from the nine hundred yards that he received his rookie year. So he got three of five one thousand yard seasons, and you add them all. To his biggest his biggest year when he had sixteen hundred yards receiving, and and that was during the Chip Kelly era. And so you so you add all them yards together. I guess he got about five six thousand yards receiving as an Eagle. And he had like three 1,000 yard receivers when he was with the Washington Redskins. So that's 9, 10. Yeah, he, yeah, he had, he has 11,000 yards all together as an as a, as an Eagles receiver. I mean, as a receiver as a whole. So I mean, it's a man, it's a man thing I can talk about. But overall, but the more I can say, y'all, of the statistics, if there is there, if you don't believe, do your research, go check it out, and you'll see yourself. Um, 56, no, 51, 51, 26, um, I'm, that's a blowout. That's a complete embarrassing blowout. But to me, the embarrassing, like I mentioned earlier in this video, the, the embarrassing thing really is when the Eagles allow Corey Clement, former Eagles running back, backup running back, who was a backup, playing against the backup, when the backups allow a backup to run 45, the 35 to 40 yards up the field for a touchdown score. To me, that was the most embarrassing thing. To me, that's my opinion. Everybody got their own opinion about what, 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 what the Eagles allowed it for. It's all sacks. I mean, all I mean, was, well, yeah, actually, Mitchell got sacked in this game, I think, four times in this game. But you you can look at sacks, you can look at picks, or so however you want to look at it. But to me, the embarrassing thing. Was Corey Clement running 35 to 40 yards for a touchdown score? Like I said, we allow a backup to play the backups to run past the backups when the backups allow a touchdown score. No, there's no way you can put it. So, um, 
overall statistics. And like I said, if you, if you don't believe what I'm saying, you can do your research or if you got the Eagles app, go check out the Eagles app or you can go and stream it on your, on your tablet or on your phone or you can go on any ESPN or NFL Network, FS1 hat, wherever you want to go, check out your statistics. Go ahead and do it yourself because I try my best to explain what I just seen, what I witnessed. Like I said, to me, this game was not an embarrassment, but the embarrassment is when we allow a backup to get a touchdown score. That's that's how I feel about it. That's me. Everybody got their own agenda of how what they felt was embarrassing, but to me, it was the running back. It was the backup running back. That's all I got to say on that. So, find it for do this issue, your boy, the green talents. Coming at you with a not an impressive, not a, a very, a not very impressive loss. 51 26 Cowboys win. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit up here and, and say all respect due to the Cowboys. I can't say it because of, because I'm a cowboy hate at heart. And I got I got no respect for the Cowboys. Never had, never will. You know what I'm saying? There are a few players back in the day that I like. That way before Jerry Jones bought the team. But overall, after Jerry Jones bought the team. 89 going on going on to now. I have no respect for the Dallas Cowboys. Never had, never will. You know, it's a hate thing. A, a lot of Eagles fans hate the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a mom that one on on mom that one thousand percent that don't like the Cowboys. It is what it is with me. You know what I'm saying? So we got swept by them. We should have won that we should have we should have won that game when we played them back in week three. That was the game we should have won. But we allowed them to beat us 40-some points in that game. And then in this game, we allowed 51 points in this game. So both games were blowouts. Because we scored 20 points in the, in that game, the week three game, and we scored 20-some points in this game that we lost today. So I risked my hands on that one. So as always, comment, share, like, subscribe, no, notification bell on top. So when I make the video, for me to you for your enjoyment and pleasure and I'm quite sure this video is not won't it won't be your enjoyment because it was not my enjoyment to make it I started not to make a video on this game but I had to because this is the last and final video of the regular season the playoffs start next week can't wait to see who we play but they're saying we we more likely to play the Buccaneers at Tampa that could be a good game that's a good that's a game we could win it's a game we could lose. It depends on how the Eagles strategize their game defensively, offensively, special teams. Who, who can out-coach who? That's what it's going to be on. Can Nick Sirianni out-coach Todd Bowles, offensive special defense, and can the offense outscore uh, Jonathan Gannon's defense? All will be revealed. All will be revealed <laughs> next week, y'all. Have fun. This is the weekend. Not a good, not a good one at that, but it is what it is. So this is your boy. Sign out. Y'all have fun. Enjoy the night. I will not be enjoying mine.